Hey everyone, it's Lindsay from Cat Fur and Cross Stitch back for another floss tube video. I first want to start this one off by saying a huge thank you to every single one of you out there. I was blown away by the response to my first video, which was a super long whip parade. I didn't know how many people were going to watch. I had no idea how many people would subscribe, like, and comment. So I am just eternally grateful to every single one of you for taking a chance, watching that epically long video and um, subscribing and then coming back for more. So just know from the bottom of my heart that I do truly appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'm just blown away. So I'm almost brought to the point of speechlessness, which is um, something that just doesn't happen in, in my household. So um, my family also thanks you. Um, all right, today I had huge hopes of filming a room tour for you, but it is absolutely disgusting out. So the natural lighting, which I'll need to be able to kind of show off all the bits and pieces of this room just is not there. So I'm going to go to my next plan of filming um, an FFO mini parade, which is just the little ones that I've finished recently, and then a haul. And that actually works really well for me because then I can put all of the haul away. So it's not sitting here waiting to be filmed while I'm filming my room tour. So uh, the room tour is coming. I had a lot of requests to see what's up on the walls behind me um, and just get a peek into like my floss storage system and my fabric storage and all of that stuff. Um, so that is coming as soon as I get some time and a really nice sunny day. I promise that'll happen. Um, baseball takes precedence right now and we were just away for the weekend at a tournament in London. We didn't make it to the final week or final day of the tournament, but we did really well, better than we thought, better than we have in the last couple of years. So that's a positive to start the summer off. Um, but yeah, it just meant that baseball is in full gear right now for my son. And that's where I'm a manager of the team. So I just have to be there every game. But anyway, with all that aside, let's get into um, showing you some of my recent FFOs. All right, so I have four recent FFOs. Um, these are over the last probably month or so, um, stitches that I finished stitching and I've ordered the frames. They finally came in and I framed them. I do frame all of the things myself, so everything is a little bit wonky, but um, I do my best and it just saves a lot of money in the long run. Most of my frames are from Amazon, or I will order from Custom Frames Canada, but they are pretty pricey. So unless I can't find a frame through Amazon or Michael's with a coupon or something to that effect, um, I'll go to them. But I really try to just get it on the cheap. It doesn't matter. It's really just going on my walls. I don't really mind what it's framed in as long as the piece is visible. So um, yeah, let's show you off here the first couple of designs. I do have my trusty notebook that I'm going to open to my page just so that I don't forget any of the pattern designers and the pattern names. Uh, but first up, we have um, some Abby Sue Designs patterns. And I think I saw the uh, Abby Sue's designs featured re more, most recently on Frizzy Lizzie Stitches. So Lizzie's um, video, she was doing Coraline, I think. Um, and I'm not a huge Coraline person, but I am a big Disney princess person. So I have Merida and this is actually just called Merida figure and it is stitched all in the called for colors. And this is just a piece of Ariel or dwarf. One of those two fabrics, uh, 32 count from picture this plus. And this is a frame that I got from Amazon. So that's what she looks like. I'll try to keep it out of the ring light there. Um, I love the frame. It's got some glitter in it. So it really stands out, makes it little fancy, fancy. But yeah, she stitched up really easy. I was able to get her done in the course of a weekend. And I just love the colors. Um, my husband's really creeped out about the fact that she doesn't have a face, but I actually don't mind it because I find sometimes the faces take away from the beauty of the, of the piece. And so I think she's beautiful. And then on the same vein, I also did Ariel figure. By Abby Sue Designs and this is my favorite Disney character. Um, she was my favorite princess growing up. I loved The Little Mermaid. I saw it in the theater. It was a long time ago but I did see it in the theater and yeah I've just loved her ever since. Um, so yeah I finished her as well. I think she went a little bit faster because she was a little more block stitching whereas Merida has a lot of confetti in her hair. As you can see, she's got a lot of colors in her hair, so there's a lot of confetti there. Whereas Ariel's more of a solid color for her hair, so she went a little bit faster and I was able to get her done in probably one or two sittings. 
and she's done on the same fabric so a 32 count I think it's Ariel by Picture This Plus and framed in the same frame. I have two more frames and two more patterns that I anticipate stitching. Um, I believe it's Alice and Belle that I'm going to be stitching. And then I also have the twins from uh, The Shining that I'm going to frame, but I'll probably get a more spooky frame. I don't think a glittery frame is necessarily the most appropriate frame to stitch that one in. But yeah, love those. Again, really easy to stitch. And I'll have the links for um, Abby Sue's site down below. Next up is a country cottage, no, Little House Needleworks um, design. And this is called Batters Up. And I started this one on the very first day of the Blue Jay season this year. So I mentioned in my last video that I had intentions of stitching on baseball pieces Every time I watched a Blue Jays game, I think that lasted like the first week. But yeah, I did stitch this guy up. I did switch most of the colors to Leo and Roxy, or sorry, Roxy Flosco. I think I did that all last video. I mentioned uh, the wrong name for them. It's Roxy Flosco. Um, except for the grass up here I did in a week's dye works. Um, I just picked colors from my stash. I wanted it to look more like have more movement in this in the piece than just a solid DMC conversion. A couple other changes that I did. These banners down here were red, red, white and blue, which is the typical uh, baseball, American baseball pastime, all that stuff. But I'm Canadian. So I didn't want it to be red and white because I didn't think that fit, um, fit the theme as well. So I did just take out the red and I replaced it with uh, the blue. And we just moved on with that. And then over here, they had like this weird these L's were backwards and they had like a weird guy sitting in the middle of them and I just thought it looked a little bit funny. So I turned the second L around and I just got a button from um, just another button co um, on one, two, three stitch. It's just a baseball button there. Sorry if there's a glare on it. And I just glued it on there um, so that it kind of filled in the space that was left by turning that L around and taking that guy out. Um, but everything else is the same. I'm kind of mad at myself that I put the five and the two in because the Blue Jays won their first game like 11 to something and I could have very easily just changed that to be the memory or even two, three for 2023. But I'd already stitched it just mindlessly, not even thinking about the fact that I could have customized that part. But this is a frame from Barnwood Frames, I think it's called. Hold on. No, Barnwood USA. It is on a store on Amazon. I can get them through the Canadian affiliate of the Amazon site. So Amazon.ca. Um, they take a little bit uh, of time to come, but you can customize the size that you want. And I absolutely love them because they really go with the style of frames that I like, which are more rustic, um, kind of beat up weathered looking. And so these are very, very nice. You can definitely get a splinter off them though. So be very careful. The last finish I have is one that was a secret sale with Holly over at the uh, Holly the Cross Stitch Addict. And I believe... I can't remember her name, but I think it's one stitch at a time. They were stitching this together. It's called Hive Rules by Primrose Cottage. Um, and I finished it. I don't even think she knew I was stitching it along with her in secret sal status. Um, but yeah, I finished this. This is one of the wonkiest of the framed uh, pieces that I have. Don't look too close. It's 100% straight, but from afar you can't tell. It hangs on the far wall over there so nobody can tell because my chair is in the way. I absolutely love how this turned out. The colors are absolutely fantastic. The pattern was amazing to work from. And I just, I thought it was really pretty. So here it is up close. Just so you can see all of the different motifs. And this is part of their whole like bee collection pattern that they have. So yeah, really happy with that. And this is just stitched on that 32 count, I think it's called Smoke by Zweigart. So it's like their printed fabric that's very similar to vintage country mocha but it's the white with like a dirty look to it so I thought that kind of per fit it perfectly and this is also in one of the Barnwood USA frames it's the only place I could find that had a frame that literally fit this project perfectly um because they they'll custom make them so yeah that is the final FFO that I have um and I'll show you the rest of them in this room in my room tour um but yeah I'm really happy with myself that I was able to put in the efforts to finally finish these four items they've kind of been sitting on my uh desk for a little while and I needed to get them in frames so I could get them off my desk and up on my walls so 
Now I'm going to move over to the haul portion of this. There's a lot of fabric, but there's also a few other uh, goodies like patterns and some floss and whatnot. So let's get into that portion now. All right, first up, let's start off with the fabric. I told you I have a lot of it. Um, I love fabric. I love having different collections, different choices, different colors, different counts, everything. I just love having fabric to pick from. So the first one that I'm going to show you here is one that I've been waiting to come into stock on one, two, three stitch, and I just couldn't wait anymore. So I went over to Traditional Stitches, which is in Calgary, which is a Canadian supplier. And I generally try to stick with Canadian companies, but one, two, three stitches just so fast that I can't, I can't resist going there more often than I should. Um, but this is a fat quarter of 32 count tornado by Fox and Rabbit. So it's like almost their version of murky. And that's what that looks like. Is that not beautiful? And does that not look like murky? It's so perfect, but it doesn't have that super puffiness that I find Murky has. For some reason, I guess it's the double dye process. Murky is so hard to work with, um, and I just I love it so much. So very excited to have a piece of that in my hand. Finally, like I said, I was waiting for a really long time for it to come into stock um, over on one, two, three stitch, and it just wasn't happening. Next up, we're gonna have a huge uh, love fest with Be Stitch Me. As you know, she's my favorite fabric dyer. Um, I do subscribe to her Fabric of the Month Club. I get two cuts. One is 36 count in her neutral club, and the other one is uh, 36 count in her all colors or colorful or whatever she refers to that color as, or club as, um, so I do get a piece of both. First up is her neutral, and this is Bronze Age, 36 count Bronze Age, and you can see it has a lot of browns and some greens and some just tans in it. It's a beautiful neutral. I love that it's a bit darker, so I can stitch a lot of different things on it, and the lighter colors will show up. I find I have a lot of problems with the lighter neutrals and showing up lighter neutral colors on it, so I think this is gonna be a really versatile piece. And again, I get a fat quarter of those. And then her color is really fun. This is called Fruit Salad. And it's a crazy piece of fabric. I don't even know what I would be stitching on this. But I think it. when I find something, it will be perfect. I'm wondering if like a monochromatic and like a black floss 310 or anchor black or something like that would be really good for it. Because I just, I can't, uh, for the life of me, I cannot see what would go on here. But um that's part of the beauty of getting random fabrics. When you when you are looking for something and it pops from your collection, it works wonderful. Um, next up are a bunch of uh, fabrics that I had ordered from Brandy in hopes of finding something that I could stitch Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow on. I saw Sarah over at uh, Memphis Sarah E stitching hers on a piece of Heather by Picture This Plus and it's purple and it looked stunning so much so that I actually stopped stitching my piece of um Hawk Run Hollow which I was doing it on I think Vintage Country Mocha and it just was boring after I saw her piece on purple so I went over to Be Stitch Me's um website and I ordered a bunch of um half yards in purpley colors so these are all 36 count originally I was going to do 40 and then I thought you know what a 36 is just where where it's at. For me, 32 and 36 are my absolute favorite counts um, because I don't really need to work hard to make it happen. 40 is just so tiny sometimes that I just, it's not fun to stitch on. And then 28 is a little bit big sometimes. So I find I have the same problem where it's like, it almost seems like I need to use an extra piece of floss, which then makes it harder to work with. So 32, 36, you do the loop method, you're good to go. So here are some of my um, options for Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow. I'd be interested um, if you could tell me which ones you'd like the best, which ones you could see it on, and maybe that'll influence my decision. So first up, we have At the Pond, and this is a half yard again. I'll open it up a little bit more because I think you'll be able to see more of the colorway of it. So this is At the Pond absolutely beautiful it's got lots of purples and greens and there's like almost like a kind of purpley pink and I just think that that one would be a beautiful one um but it may be too light so let's see what else we have over here next up is haunted and I did buy it specifically because it made sense so this is 36 count haunted 
if you can hear that noise that's rocky I think this one's going to be too dark though so I'm already omitting that just myself but it is another beautiful one it's a little bit like fruit salad in that I don't know what I'm going to be able to stitch on it because it's so dark but again monochromatic is sometimes where it's at so we'll see I'm sure I can get something monochromatic on that next up is hibiscus let me open this guy up we got this one I think this one might actually be a really nice one for it because it does have a lot of the orange, which is a little bit more on the neutrally side. It's not neutral for sure, but it's more neutrally. So some of the colors may pop a little bit more, but they may also get lost. So I'm not sure, but this is hibiscus. So pretty. She's got such a talent for dyeing fabric. I'm just, I'm blown away by her, her talent. And the last one, Rocky's up on the desk now. So here we go. Oh, he's coming. Rocky away from the camera and the last one that I have here is called paranormal and this one's like a super dirty kind of Halloweeny fabric with the turquoises the purples the grays some browns so this one may be another contender I'm thinking it's between um, at the pond and this one so far um, I do have a piece of Heather on order from traditional stitches but I've had it on order for like um, six months so I have no idea if and when that's ever gonna come so um, if the urge to start Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow comes before that piece of fabric comes I'm going to have to choose so um, I think it's gonna be between at the pond and what was that last one paranormal personally and then I also ordered um, some of her opal fabrics I don't know why I I love the opal every once in a while so um she had a bunch in her on her site and so I ordered them this is um bedrock you can see how opaly it is and this is 32 count yes 32 count bedrock really pretty I do have bedrock in like the regular fabric as well this is flan Again, I think this will be a really nice neutral. It's a little bit more of a, like a wild neutral, but it's still got the neutral colors in it that I think a lot of stuff will pop on it. And that's also a 32 count opal. And then the last one that I got, and I got this one specifically for um, Angel of Love, I think her name is, from, oh, hi, hi. <laughs> it's Rocky, he says hi. I got this one specifically for Angel of Love by Lavender and Lice. Um, I think I saw Emily at Eclectic Possessions stitch it on gingerbread from Picture This Plus, but I thought this one would be a really nice option as well. It has more of like a, I don't know, it looks more of like a coppery opalescence to it, but when you actually look at it, it does have a lot of blue, so I wonder if it's more of like a holographic um, glitteriness, glitteriness to it. So this is gingerbread, if I didn't say that, um, 32 count as well. And that may be a little bit too tight for all of the beads that go on Angel of Love, but um, either way. And she also had some in her, um, I think some of these may have been in her ready to ship section, which Brandy has a very extensive ready to, ready to ship section on her website. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested um, in just trying some of her fabrics because they will come fast. Um, sorry life with a cat this is devil's claw and I got this in a 32 count and it's got a lot of purples and blues I think this will be perfect for a Halloween piece maybe like one with super bright vibrant colors I know Weeks Dye Works has a lot of almost um, fluorescent like absinthe and stuff like that um, floss colors so I think that would be really cool on something like this and I also think that was maybe her color of the month one month that I didn't subscribe to it I also got a piece of 36 count sea glass. This is just a really beautiful greeny blue color. It's, it's more greeny blue in person. It's coming up a little bit more green on camera, but it's beautiful. And then I also got a piece of sand dollar, which is one of my favorite neutrals from her. And this is what I was talking about, about like the more light colored neutral fabrics that um, some of the lighter neutral floss may not pop as much on it, but um, doesn't matter I still love it it's a really beautiful fabric color and I got that all three of those are a quarter yard and then I got a half yard and I'm not sure why of strawberry shortcake I don't know why I don't, I don't 
I'm sure I had reasons. Uh, I don't know what those were or are or what my plans were, but it's pretty. And this is a 32 count as well. So maybe for a mirror, I have no idea. I can't imagine putting a mirror beauty on something that busy, but regardless, it's there. This cat is making me sweat. And then I have two pieces of fabric from Hand Dyed by Rolanda, and these are Lugana, and you know my stance on Lugana, but I've seen um, Amber from Rogue Mama Stitching stitching all of her soda stitches on these, and they're just so beautiful. And for some reason, when I went onto the Hand Dyed by Rolanda um, Etsy site, it seemed like only her Lugana colors come out with this type of marbling on them. So I thought, you know what, I'll order 28 count, that way it's the biggest holes and the best option for um, being able to um, stitch comfortably on them and so I just I had to so this is uh, these don't have names just numbers but this is a 28 count Lugana it is a half yard and it's opalescent how beautiful is that it's just so pretty I can't help it it's beautiful. It's all of the colors that I absolutely love. I can see tons of pieces on this, especially something like, um, you know, like a sea turtle or mermaid or something of that regard. And then the other one that I got is also a 28 count Lugana. This is another quarter yard. And this is what that one looks like. Like, look at the marbling on it. It's just so gorgeous. Oh, and again, I think I could see a fancy lady of some sorts on this one. Just, it's so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'll have the link to all of the stores down below. So Traditional Stitches, Be Stitch Me, and Hand Dyed by Rolanda. If you're interested in checking out some of the fabrics or other items that they have on their site. All three of them also have flosses and patterns and beads and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to get rid of the cat and pull over the next section of haul. Okay, so next up, I actually have a little bit more fabric, but it's of a different variety. This is from Stash Fabrics, and they are a Canadian company um, who sell kind of quilting fabrics. And I saw, I want to say it was Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, um, do a bag. And if it's not, I'm so sorry. I, I watched so many floss two videos that I just, I don't know. And this is, um, actually, let me take off the bow because doesn't that doesn't belong but this is the gorgeous Halloween fabric that she had and I had to find it it's a discontinued pattern um and I just it was necessary to find it somewhere and I got two um yards of it so I can have a couple of different project bags this will likely be the outside this will be the inside I might do like a thread bed or one of those ones that I can house my little floss bobbins in I don't know, it was just too cute not to get. So that is what one of them looks like. And look at the dog in a mummy suit and all the little animals dressed up for Halloween. And then like I said, the inside fabric as well just coordinates really well with it. So yeah, I got that from Stash Fabrics in Canada and I'll link them down below as well. Uh, next up is my Roxy Floss Co. Floss of the Month. I do subscribe to both of the clubs the neutral and the colors so let me just open these I'm sorry if it's a little crinkly I thought I'd gotten everything out of their packages but I didn't so here's the neutral how beautiful are those I don't know if they look super similar in the camera they're not as similar they look really similar to me on the camera but they're not as similar in person so here is Porcini I don't know how to say that They've got sugar and spice. Love the variegation in that. This is sand dollar. It's a little bit lighter than Porcini. A little maybe a bit more yellow. We got smoothie, which is a beautiful kind of neutrally orangey, you know, like you would think of like a pastel orange. This is a little bit more of a dusty pastel orange. And then we've got macaroon, which I thought said macaroni, which also would fit the color. It's beautiful. And then I also have the brights. Let me just open that package. I'm so sorry. Put the crinkles. I'll open it as low and far away as possible. So here are the brights. So pretty. Look at this variegation. So here we have Cyan Aura or Aura. 
I don't know which part of that made me more Canadian. Um, this is Opposites Attract. Beautiful. And then this one here is Vitamin C. And I want to just say like these three colors could be used beautifully together in like a pattern. You know, you could have one that kind of is for both and then the individuals. Then we also have a blue raspberry, very apt based on the color. And then outer space, which I thought said oyster space, but it's outer space. And this is more of a, like a navy blue black color. Beautiful. Love their club. It's absolutely amazing having all of these flosses to pick from. I've um, converted so many different patterns and projects based on their um, floss club. It's it's fantastic. This here is just a baggie of individual flosses that I needed. Some extra DMC for patterns that required multiple floss colors or multiple skeins that I didn't have. And then just um, a color a rhubarb. Um, and then there's an NPI. I'm not going to go through them individually, but that's just from um, one, two, three stitch. And then I actually have an order here. There's a third one, but I've started it. So you'll see that in my next floss tube update where I go over all my whips. I placed an order with Owl Forest Embroidery. They actually do ship their flosses and pattern boxes and all of that stuff through a third party company. I don't know how like okay it is to buy for that, but I really wanted to start their new sell, which is their tra uh, Treasure, Di Treasure Island. Yeah, Treasure Island. So I did buy the floss pack for that. I'll put the picture up on the screen. They do have a couple of weeks out already. Um, I haven't started it yet. It's just, you know, it's one of those like, oh my gosh, I have to start that immediately. And then the stuff comes and I don't start it. So probably could have waited a little while, but here is the um, Owl Forest floss. I do get the DMC version of their floss colors. And I'm going to stitch that on the called for Vintage Country Mocha. So that is for that project. And then I also picked up um, the Emerald City uh, floss pack for it because I figured if I was already buying um, something and paying to have it shipped over, I would also get the Emerald City because I have mentioned last time I'm a huge Wizard of Oz fan. So I wanted to make sure that I picked this up so that if and when I decide I want to stitch that, I have the flosses because it is something that is on my eventual stitch plans. It just hasn't happened quite yet. So... And I did also get a couple of patterns. There's only a few here. This one I saw on Amber at Rogue Mama Stitches for sure. Or Rogue, Rogue Mama Stitching, Rogue Mama Stitches. Her link will be down below. Um, she had this book. It's Care Bears. Um, yeah, I'm a child of the 80s. I have no problem admitting it. Like I said last time, I'm 42 when I'm really actually 45. Um, was born in 78. And I grew up on the Care Bears. I watched this every single morning before school up until I was way too old to be watching this every single morning before school. So it has patterns for all of the Care Bears in it. They're absolutely adorable. If you haven't seen what they look like, check out Amber's Instagram. Um, she does have some pictures of the ones she's completed posted. And I just, I'm, I'm such an enabled person. I may be an enabler, but I'm also very easily enabled and I needed to have that. So we did it. We went, we did, it was purchased. I got it on eBay. There were lots. I, it, I think it even came from a Canadian, um, seller and it was like 10 bucks. So there's tons of them out there. You just have to search for them. And I will put the link or at least the name of it down below because it's by Paragon, Paragon Needlecraft. And I don't know how easily that is to find. So, uh, next up is by Rosewood Manor and, and this is Blue Rhapsody. And again, this is a secret sal that I wanted to start with Holly at Holly the Cross Stitch Addict. She has really good taste in patterns. Um, she has a lot of full coverage, which aren't my taste, but um, all of her non-full coverage are definitely to my liking. As I said before, I really like butterflies. So there's a nice butterfly in the corner of that. And I loved that it was more of the monochromatic-ish. Um, there are two colors in it. Um, I did uh, do some color converting for it. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. And I did pick my fabric. This is uh, just a quarter yard of Silver Moon. So it is more on the white side with just a little hint of like a grayish color um, to make it not so stark white. And then the colors that I picked are 
um, in here and I'll just quickly open it so you can see the two shades. There are two shades of blue, which I didn't realize looking at it. So I got uh, Color and Cotton Delft Blue and then Classic Color Works uh, Old Blue Jeans. So these are gonna be my two colors for it. And I think that that works really well with the colors of the pattern and then also with the fabric. I think that'll just look, you can see the color of the fabric much better now with the floss against it. It's more of like a grayish color, but yeah. Excited to start that. I don't know when I'll start that, but I am excited to start it. And then of course, are you even a stitcher if you don't buy every single Blackbird pattern that comes out? So I got Crown and Shields. A, it's Quakers. B, it's Blackbird. C, it's monochromatic. I couldn't help it. This one actually down here isn't monochromatic, but this one is. So I think there's multiple ways that you can stitch things in here. I just, I loved it. I was absolutely drawn to it. I think the color that they call for in here, if I'm not mistaken, is... Does it say? Oh, it's Poison Apple. Um, and then there's a couple other ones where they have all the multiple colored versions and then there's some smaller versions. Um, you've got some smaller patterns in there, but they're all Quaker style, um, which I love. So I will definitely be stitching, actually here's a picture that shows all of the patterns that are in the book. I'll definitely be stitching this guy and I mean, I'll probably stitch all of them, but I'll definitely be starting with this one down here. And that's with Poison Apple by Classic Color Works. So yeah, picked up that. And then the final thing I wanted to talk about in this video is actually also a new pattern, but is an upcoming stitch along that I'm going to be doing with Shiloh over at X Stitch MD. Um, we both post about it on our Instagram in our stories, but as it gets closer, we'll be posting about it more and talking about it more. And that is for the Every Opening Flower by With Thy Needle and Thread. I was not going to be able to say that word. Um, Brenda Gervais. So here's the pattern. It's stunning 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 this sal will start on july 1st and we will likely use the hashtag every opening flower sal um i'll put the information down below for both shiloh's channel and the hashtag the pattern links to it and all of that stuff and i have picked out my fabric i'm going to be doing it on 36 count Count Winter Wheat by Color and Cotton. I was going to do it on um, Fox and Rabbit's Flannel Flower, favorite fabric ever, but I thought this one actually suited what the pattern called for a little bit more. It seems to be more of like a darker neutral and I didn't want any of those colors to get lost. I'll likely stitch it in all of the called for if I can. Um, there are some more neutrally colors in there that I, I will make sure stand out on the fabric. If not, I'll go kind of up or down one tone just to make sure that it does pop still. But yeah, that is starting July 1st, the Every Opening Flower Sal. Um, would love for you to uh, join in and stitch along with us. And as a special thank you for following my uh, first video and then joining me back here on my second one, I would love to give away two copies of the Every Opening Flower pattern to you. I do only own one, but I will um, purchase it from your local stitching shop that's closest to you or 123 Stitch or wherever so that you can have a pattern sent directly to your house. So um, if you're interested in stitching along with us and would like to start on um, July 1st, I will have this giveaway open just for one week so that I can have the opportunity to purchase it and send it to you in hopes of you getting it uh, by July 1st. So if you could uh, comment down below with the comment flower, the word flower somewhere in your comment, and just let me know that you would be interested in stitching it. You must be 18. I would like for you to be a subscriber. It's not required. If you just happen to pop over here and would like to stitch it, but you're not interested in stitching or coming back for other videos, that's totally fine. Um, if you could thumbs up the video again, that would be great. All of the fun stuff. Um, but yeah, just use the word flower in your comment and I will pick two winners next Monday um, and I will put that up on Instagram. I'll also put it in the uh, description down below who the winners are and contact you as best I can and get those out to you as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again. I really, really appreciate everybody who stopped by and has taken a moment to watch my video. If you're interested in any of this stuff here and I didn't provide the appropriate links or information, just let me know and I'll be happy to do that. Any color conversions, anything like that that you're interested in, I'm also happy to share with you. So until next time, guys, which I hope is a room tour later this week, I hope you have a fantastic day and happy stitching. Bye, everyone. Thank you.